Inheritance by Lineage University's Mentorship Program with David E. Taylor presents to you Training for God's Miracles and Wonders The Mosaic Lineage Dominion and Mastery over the Water Element Splitting of the Red Sea the Elijah Lineage, dominion and mastery over the fire element, calling fire from heaven. Ascension into heaven, Jesus raising off the ground in mid-air in front of his disciples, turning water into wine, walking on top of water. Invisibility powers, Fire powers. Training for God's miracles and wonders. God is not limited to anything. You gave your life to Jesus, He gave you power. David E. Taylor was visited by the Lord face to face at 17. And from there, it led to incredible miracles globally and a mandate to train others. Face to face appearances from the Lord is what caused the men in the Bible to walk in incredible miracles. Just like the men in the Bible, David E. Taylor's face to face appearances and intimacy with the Lord brought him into operating in these incredible miracles and marvels and birthed this training. In this training, you will be brought into your own face-to-face -face intimacy with Jesus, which will cause you to walk in these miracles and marvels. God has used David E. Taylor in miracles for over 30 years now. You said she felt Jesus touch her. Yes, yeah, she felt Jesus touch her. You will never need this walk again. The sick are healed. The lame walk. People arise out of their wheelchairs and drop their crutches and canes. Yeah, and he could not walk. He's going to ask you to. Yes. And Jesus gave you a miracle. Yes. And he is not walking. Cancerous tumors dissolve. The deaf hear. The blind see. You said a young lady's being healed of blindness. She was blind. Yes. I can see you. And the dead are raised. All these years in ministry, he has trained his staff to work in miracles. But now, God has told him to train the masses, of which now you can be a part of. These are the basics you do, is healing the sick and raising the dead. You can do that once that faith is unlocked in you. Training for God's miracles and marvels. Be trained to walk in the same power of the kingdom that Jesus and his apostles walked in. To heal the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. I am training you how to walk in miracles. The Lord is about to heal you. Now I'm going to walk through the aisle and I'm going to pick people to come up here from the audience to pray for the sick. Be personally trained by David E. Taylor in service. You come here. Yes, you. God is going to use you, precious lady. You're one of the ones that's going to be trained for the arena. The first thing you got to have is boldness. Demons do not listen to passive words. When they came to Jesus, how did Jesus deal with them? He would just say, go. That's a command. You got to speak like a king. So as you pray for her, you be bold. Do it now. Give me that king. You're not going to need this king. Spirit of infirmity, go now in Jesus' name. You're releasing power now. Thank you, Lord. Go. Receive it. There it goes. Come on, give God a shout. Walk now. Give Jesus the biggest shout of praise you can. That's the miracle. There it is right there. There it is. That's the miracle. Stand on your feet and give the Lord the biggest shout of praise you can. I take 60 milligrams of oxy. I have none of the pain that was here on the side. Nothing. Nothing. Give the Lord a shout of praise, people. Fight. Alexis, come here. Who has a crutch or a cane? Give me another person up here who want to be healed. I want you to go up to him and pray for her. There Fire in the name of Jesus, you will be healed. The woman there is perfect. Get out of her in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out. What do you feel, mother? No more pain. Move her cane out of the way. Look at that. 
Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. And two weeks ago, I couldn't walk. Look at that. Lord, use her in miracles more. Fire. Every last one of you can do what was just done. Now, this miracle right here, I could tell you exactly how God wanted it done. She needs to be spoken to, arise and heal. Come here, sir. Yeah. In Jesus' name, rise and be healed. Pull out. Walk. Oh, my goodness, people, give the Lord a shout of praise for that. Lift your hands. Did you just see that? That's how simple. If you want to walk in miracles, you need to be a part of this training. God wants to use you to do these miracles. This is amazing. This is incredible. But you can't walk in that thing you are not told. Because that's what you're here for. You're here to be trained and me to show you what you can do by the Holy Ghost. And by this, I am training you how to walk in miracles. How to heal the sick when we go into the arena, the basketball arena with 20,000 people in there. There's going to be thousands and you're going to do this. David E. Taylor has been used for 30 years in the supernatural power of God, and now he's training others on a massive scale to do the same. Don't miss this. Give God a shout of praise because he's about to use you in a way like you have never seen. A glory power is about to fall on that faith that is in your spirit, in your heart, that's going to cause you to transform nations and shake continents. Praying with boldness, praying with authority. God has already planned to heal people. He just need you to show up. This is the kind of training that you are going to receive at the training for God's miracles and marvels with David E. Taylor. Bring the sick, those in wheelchairs and on crutches and canes. Look at that! Look at that! Shout to the Lord with the voice of Zion. Or who have any manner of disease. Be equipped to heal the sick. Join David E. Taylor for the next training for God's miracles and marvels. Registration and seats are free. Call now 1 877 The Glory. That's 877 843 4567. Welcome to this special edition of Inheritance by Lineage. David E. Taylor presents to you training for God's miracles and marvels. Jehovah himself has summoned you through his son Jesus to walk in his supernatural power of miracles and marvels through the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Previously on the Inheritance by Lineage series, David E. Taylor released the premier revelation he received in his divinely granted trip to heaven concerning discovering your divine destiny, lineage, identity, and God's inheritance for you in the saints. This is the key to getting the ancient glory and power of God back into the 21st century. And now is the time for you to be trained on how to access and walk in this power. Just like the men of old in the Bible who experienced face-to-face -face visitations and contact with the Lord and as a result were issued power to walk in the miraculous, the Lord appeared face-to-face -to, -face to David E. Taylor and for 30 years he has walked in the miracles of God all over America and the world. The deaf hear, the lame walk, the incurable are cured, the blind see, devils are driven out, and the dead are raised. Just like he has trained his staff to walk in miracles for 30 years, the Lord spoke to him and told him that now is the time for him to train the masses to walk in miracles and marvels. In this miracles and marvels training, you too are going to be brought into your own face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. And as a result of your intimate contact with Him, glory powers are going to be released on you, and you will walk in miracles and marvels. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. The only sin in this realm is the sin of limitation. 
Hear now this shocking revelation that David E. Taylor brought out during the Miracles in America crusade against cancer. Welcome to Training for God's Miracles and Marvels, Part 1. Now give him the biggest shout of praise. We pray, Lord, we pray. Shout of praise you get. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, wonderful master. Wonderful Jesus. Father of life. You may be seated. Get your Bibles. And did you bring your pads and pencils? That's why I set these tables up because what the Lord Jesus told me to share with you it's going to change your life. Oh my God, I see a cloud all over you. I see miracle glory resting on you. You know, if we just started the miracle session right now of people who own crutches and canes and I let you pray for them, they're just going to get healed here right now. <laughs> but I got to also teach you other things this power that the Lord this power that the Lord has told me to teach you on is something beyond the power that you are used to and ready for or that we've been taught in the church. Now listen to me, you gotta hear me. It's beyond the power of the Holy Spirit. Most of the charismatic church only understand the power of the Holy Spirit, but there's a power that Jesus gave the apostles before the Holy Spirit ever was brought on earth. He said, behold, I give unto you what? He, Jesus said this to them. Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the what? Enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. It says that he gave them power and authority to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. They were not filled with the Holy Ghost. And then, after the Holy Spirit came, who's the third person of the Godhead, he gave them more power. So, watch this. They had to be open-minded and open-hearted to a whole new level of power given to them beside the power Jesus gave them that the Holy Spirit was given them. But then there's this third realm of power that not Jesus give or the Holy Spirit give but the Father gives. That's why you're in this room this morning. This is a power that Jehovah gives. And it's about to drop on you. It's not just healing the sick. It's not just raising the dead, which you can do those things. It's not just casting out devils. It's beyond. So I want you to get your Bibles with me. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12. You have to hear this, people. Don't you love the presence of the Lord? 
You know, every time I do a crusade like this, my greatest desire is just to sit at the feet of Jesus, spend time in his presence. I love to see God's people healed, but that's only secondary to the first greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. The second one is loving people. That's the healing ministry part. But I never forget the first. So turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Also get James, the epistle of James, the first chapter, 17th verse. So I'll start at James. We are always, watch this, and one of my jobs in the body of Christ is to help push the body out of mundane places. Places in the Bible that, and in the things of God that they don't discover. And one of the things I want to say is that if you notice, everyone teaches on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And even the Holy Spirit himself is a promise of the Father. He is a gift from the Father. The Bible says that in Acts, he has shared this precious gift with you all. The Holy Spirit is the top gift beside Jesus given from heaven. God gifted you with a person on earth with you. And I love the Holy Spirit. He is here in this room. He's the one who glorifies Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. But... There is another person who gives gifts from heaven. We have only heard about the gifts of the Spirit, mostly given by the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts, prophecy, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. <clears throat> the body has become more actually experienced in walking in these gifts. How many have heard about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? Wave your hands at me. <clears throat> so you got to understand There are gifts from the Holy Spirit. But what I'm going to teach you today are gifts of glory power from God the Father. They don't come from the Holy Spirit. They come from Jehovah. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Jesus says... I am the door by me if any man enter no man can come to the father but by me but the problem in our generation is we never come to the father we stop at the door Jesus Jesus never wanted us to stop at him he wanted us to go to Jehovah his whole teachings were different from what we preachers teach today he says be ye perfect even as your father his teaching was about the father why is ours any different? These things and truths have been lost, but God is restoring them in our generation again. That's why a revolution is about to take place. So, first I want to read to you James chapter 1 verse 17. Thank you musicians. Read with me what it says every good and gift see that and every perfect gift now you, you see you got to know the difference between these two every good gift and every perfect gift every good gift is not a perfect gift do you see that every good gift is not a perfect gift if it was it wouldn't say and you got to know the difference between those two every good gift and every what perfect when you start getting into perfect gifts you start getting into the gifts of Jehovah be ye perfect even as your father in heaven is yeah every good gift is not a perfect gift what it means it's good but it's not a mature complete it's not the highest level that's what he's saying how many want the highest level? <laughs> every good gift and every what? Perfect gift is from above 
and cometh down. Where did it come from? So that means it's from what? Heaven. What's about to hit you is not coming up in your spirit. It's about to come down on you. Do you understand? Right now, the Holy Spirit is on earth. He fills you and he wells up in you. But what I'm about to teach you is about to come down. Now, the Holy Spirit don't have to come down on you because he came down 2,000 years ago. That's when he came down from Jehovah. But these gifts that I'm about to, and glory powers that I'm about to teach you about, that the Lord says now release to this generation, is about to come down from heaven. Now lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm ready for the heavenly glory. <laughs> say it one more time. Coming down from the Father of lights. See that? From the who? And there are different titles about Jehovah that you must study. Do you understand? Like there are titles about Jesus. There are titles about Lucifer. In the Bible, it gives different beings uh, titles because it refers to a certain character of them. Like for instance, Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. God is called the father of lights. Do you see that? In another passage, it calls Satan the deceiver. And you got to know the difference in those titles that he can deceive you without lying. He don't have to be a father of lies to deceive you. He can tell you the truth and deceive you. Do you see the difference? So what I'm saying is when the Bible refers to Jehovah and gives him a title in the Bible, if you just like I did when I first started, you just rush past it real quick and you don't really get revelation about it. You will miss the moment when it calls him the father of lights. It's talking about the father of glory. But even more deeper than that, it's talking about, watch this, every light that exists, he is the originator and source of it, the sun, the stars, any kind of light that exists. And that, this is a whole nother message, but I'm trying to give you a, a, a point here, how deep the Bible is. God, when the Holy Spirit writes, it's very deep, it's very thorough, it's, 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 it's detailed. Do y'all understand that? So you need to study the father of lights. He's the father of so many powers of glory. That's what that means. Lights means glory. Glory has light in it. It's really saying he's the father of glory. He's the father of these lights that come down from the glory. Now watch this. With whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Now I want you to lift your hands. I want you to say, Lord, give me revelation. Now, for you that are not up to speed with inheritance by lineage and the Mosaic lineage and the Elijah lineage, you all know how I taught that you are from one of these two lineages. And the men of old and the men of the New Testament after 2000 years from the time that Moses was here, walked in unspeakable power, unlike the preachers of our day. And one of the reasons why the preachers of our day is not manifesting what I'm about to say to you is because they only know how to work with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But this last move is about working with all three of them, including Jehovah. How many are you ready to work with Jehovah? How many you, be honest, how many notice that the power the men in the Old Testament walked in look much more greater than the New Testament preachers? Do you want to know why that is? It's because they work with the father. And the father is the greater one out of the, out of the, out of the three. This is why Jesus said, and I'm starting this institute called the Greater Works Institute. Really, I'm already starting it by preaching it to you this morning. I've started a new institute with the university called the Greater Works Institute. This institute is for advanced students who want to learn the ancient powers of God. Not just the powers that are taught in the 21st century, but the ancient powers of God. You say, where do you get that from? Uh, Jesus said these words, the works that I do shall you do what? Also. No, he, he says, he that believeth on me, he says this in John, 
The works that I do, shall he do what? Also. Well, we see men doing the works of Jesus. And some of them, some of them are not even doing the works of Jesus. But then he talks about, he says, and greater works than these shall you what? Do why? Because I go to my father. He mentions the father about the greater works. Nobody ever understood that. But he mentions greater works than what he did. Now, let me say this. You can't do greater works than Jesus. If there's not someone greater than Jesus. Uh Oh, and in John chapter 14, he says, my father is greater than I. Do he not say that? Well, I got to show you that because some of y'all look at me like little ducks on the log. Come on, turn with me to John real quickly before I turn, get you back to, to, to Romans. Come on. John chapter 14. Because we got to set this precedence right here. That the father is greater than Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It, see, if, if you don't understand that, then you don't, the ram of power that I'm about to teach on and that comes from him, you won't get it. You won't understand why. Now, the Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament too. But he was released upon the earth, upon all flesh in the New Testament. But watch this, John chapter 14, verse 28. When you get it, would you say amen? What did Jesus say? Is this in red in your Bible? (laughs) Read, it says, and ye have... Heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice because I said, I go unto what? The Father. For my Father is greater than I. Now, for you that have been around people who have enmeshed the Godhead together and said that all three of them are just one person, that's false. When I went to heaven and I was, I was at the throne of God and I saw a seat at the right hand of God that Jesus sit in, I realized that they are not one. Because when Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father, he wasn't saying that they were both one person. He was saying that I'm the representative of God on earth. And he was trying to tell the apostles, when you look at me, everything I'm doing, I'm doing what I see my Father do. I'm his representative. You are seeing him in action. But he didn't say you were seeing him in person. It says in Hebrews, Jesus being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He was not the person God, he was the express image of his person. Am I making any sense? And so one of the problems is when we make Jesus God, the father, and we don't make a difference then you can't really learn the powers that I'm about to tell you about because the powers that God have are far greater than Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that sounds like blasphemy, but it's the word of God. If God is in fact greater than Jesus, and we know the scriptures can't be broken and Jesus said that in red, if God is greater than Jesus, then he has greater glory, greater power, greater everything. Jesus said, I am the door by me if any man enters. Jesus is, if Jesus is a door and God is greater than him, and he says you can't get the father or access him except by me, then that means if he's the door, God must be the room. Did y'all see the door when y'all came in here? That's a good example of what Jesus is compared to the father. I'm not putting Jesus down. As a matter of fact, Jesus is rejoicing that I'm teaching this because he loves exalting his father. It's not putting our savior down. It's trying to show you a perspective that we have stopped short of what our savior died for. Jesus said, I'm the door. So if you look at the door when you come out, come in here, that's one thing. But to come into this whole building is the father. How many know that's greater? You got to understand the dimensions that are greater. I want to show you something. Lord, should I tell him this? Do y'all want revelation? Well, y'all know how the Lord visited me in a dream and sent an angel to me. I'm always having visitations. Like Paul said, I will come to dreams and visitations of the Lord. 
But he began to tell me the revelation of the 18 to 20 year process. How it takes him 18 to 20 years to prepare a leader. You know, we've, we've talked about that. It's in books. You've heard it. And how before I was delivered over to Jehovah by Jesus, because in the year 2010, basically, a new move started. And uh, in that dream, the Lord spoke to me. He says, this is your 18th year. I have been in ministry 18 years. I thought on the 13th year, my ministry would begin nationally. But God really don't bring a real leader out until after 20 years. That's what they were saying. When I researched the Bible, every leader who God put on the scene from Elijah, Moses, David, all of them went through a 20-year process before they began, got national prominence. I got a book out there called The Divine Timing of God versus Premature Exposure. See, what's wrong in our generation, a lot of these young preachers, they want premature exposure. They want platforms. And they really get on them early by who they meet and connect with. But just because you connect with someone and you can get on a big platform don't mean you're ready. And mostly all of the ministries, I've noticed, even that some of the fathers that are well known in the body of Christ promoted these young prophets. And now they are nowhere to be seen. They've fallen off the scene in great disgrace. Because they weren't ready. Are y'all hearing me here? And the Lord told me in a dream, I held you back. I didn't let you come out nationally and globally until I finished the process. I always wondered why my ministry and my exposure to platforms were going slower than other people. I saw people who started when I started and they were meeting all the great people and their ministries were blowing up and doing all of this. And now they're dead. Some of them OD'd on drugs. I'm talking about preachers. They're nowhere to be found because they were exposed too early. And when you are exposed too early, you won't last. Are you hearing this here? I've lasted for 30 years because I've had to wait longer. It's a protection in that. Are you hearing this here? And so the Lord began to say this to me. I, I researched the scriptures. The angel said to me, it takes God 18 to 20 years to raise up a true prophet, a true leader, and bring them on the scene. He said, this is your 18th year. You're not ready. You still have two more years before God releases you globally and nationally to the nation. This was in 2008 when he came to me. And when I looked up the word, I saw that everywhere I went, and, and this is what was said to me. He says, only Jesus did it in 18 years. That's why he said, I said 18 years. He says, only Jesus did it in 18 years, but every other man, it takes 20 years because of the fall of Adam. Because of the fall of Adam, we are two years behind. Are y'all hearing me here? Two years behind because of the fall of Adam. But he says, every, every 18 to 20 years, so when I woke up out of that dream, I looked up the scriptures and I found out that Jesus was released at 18 years into his public ministry. He was 12 years old. The Bible left on record how old he was. It was 12. He says he was, the Bible says it was 12, he was 12 years old when he says, I must be about my father's business. When Jehovah, the father, meets up with him at the Jordan and starts his ministry and approves of him as a son. Y'all remember that? Thou art my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It says Jesus began to be 30 years old. 30 subtracted from 12 is what? 18. 18 years. Jesus waited 18 years to do his public ministry. And some of these young preachers, they don't want to wait no, no time like that. And I was anxious like that when I was young. I, I thought I was ready because I was walking in miracles and gifts and power and stuff like that. But I wasn't ready. Not like now. When I started looking at other, other men's lives beside Jesus, it was 20 years. Joseph has a dream of greatness at 17. He don't fulfill it until he's 37. The dream comes to pass, 20 years. So the, the angel comes back to me the following year in a dream and said, God is about to release you to the world. This is an 09 from 08. He's about to release you to the world. 2010 would be the new move of God. 
Start a new. So if God raised up generals every 20 years or he prepares a man every 20 years, that means every 20 years the move shifts. If you notice in 1990, the move shift, people came on the scene like Joyce Myers, Benny Hinn, TBN came on. It used to be PTL. But when we hit the 1990s, a whole new TV movement started. A whole new list of generals we had never heard about comes on the scene in the 90s. T.D. Jakes, Pastor Benny, Rod Parsley, people nobody knew. And they hit the scene with great ministries. Since 1990 to 2010, it's how many years? It's 20 years. 20 exact years. So every 20 years, God raises up a new leadership. He raises up new men who walk in another level of power. And we are now in that time. We're in the middle of it. It's 2019, nine years deep into the new move of God. And when we hit 10 again, another move, another stronger move within this move is about to hit America. Somebody say hallelujah. And you are a part of it. And this is why God is having me teach you what I'm about to teach you. I looked up men, Jacob. He told Laban, I served in your house for 20 years, 20 years. And then the next chapter, he wrestles with the angel and the angel gives him a national name. Your name should no longer be Jacob. But as a prince, you have obtained power with God and man. Your name shall be Israel. That's a national name. David, 17 years old. He don't become king over Israel like Samuel prophesied to him until he's 37. He becomes king of all Israel at 37. That's 20 years. Nobody came into their prominence until after 20 years. Why is everybody doing it differently today? Because there's a lot of anxiousness, a lot of pride. And when men come on the scene too early like this, they don't have time to develop the kind of power I'm telling you about. I've had time to develop it because God has been able to hold me back in this way. So here it is. That, that wasn't even a revelation. That was just one. So Jesus, at two, in 2010, I go to sleep and Jehovah comes down in a cloud to me. That's when he says, I am now with you on earth. I'm inaugurating you in ministry. I will show up in regions you go into. In front of the whole news media and in front of millions of people. Like I did with Moses. It just started happening. Jesus took me to meet with Jehovah and he says, I'm delivering you over to my father. And he said these words to me, the moment I entered talking to the father, he says, I'm now with you. You've been working with Jesus, my son and my spirit, which you will continue to work with them. But now you will work more with me. What I'm talking to you about is working more with the father of lights as well. Are y'all hearing me here? And the first thing Jehovah told me, he says, in order to work with me, you've got to have a brain resurrection. Someone say brain resurrection. Brain resurrection. Write that down. <coughs> brain resurrection. Now, before you enter this class of the greater works and mastery and dominion, dominion and mastery in the glory powers of God. I want you to write this first thing down too. This is the first, what do, I, what do I call it? First principle of this ram. Are y'all ready? The first principle of this ram is, watch this. The sin of this ram is limitation. Write that down. The sin of this ram that I'm about to teach you is limitation until you take the limits off your brain I ain't talking about off God you know people say take the limits off God and we all say oh we know God can do everything but in your mind the way your mind process your mind don't always believe God come on so if some don't happen up here you can't operate in what I'm about to say 
So the sin of working with Jehovah in this ram, the sin of this, this dimension that, watch this, that keeps you out, or if you're in it and it takes you out, is limitation. And limitation is none other than unbelief and a lack of faith. Are y'all hearing me here? When Moses worked with Jehovah, with splitting seas and all of this, and the people saw them kind of miracles, it still says in Psalms, but they limited the what? Holy one of Israel. God was mad with them because they limited him. Are y'all hearing me here? And when you approach God with a dead brain, you limit him. Because your mind can't keep up with them. You say, what are you talking about? When, I, when Jesus first took me to meet the Father and the Father came and said, I'm now with you, I'm working with you. It was different than when the Holy Spirit came upon my life and I was doing miracles under the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus. When Jehovah said, you must, you must have a brain resurrection. So in order to get out of this limitation, you've got to have a brain resurrection. You say, what do you get that from? Write down brain resurrection if you haven't. Now listen to me. God told Adam and Eve, the day you eat that fruit, you shall surely what? Die. But Satan came and said, you will not surely die. In other words, he says, you won't really die physically. Eve knew he was telling the truth. You see, the devil never lied to Eve. He only deceived her. People can tell you the truth and deceive you and make you stop following God or make you stop following a minister or make you stop following a movement or ministry. But it don't mean they right. Satan is using them. Are you hearing me here? So I want to go on past this, but the, the point is, we know that when they ate the fruit, they did not die physically, did they? Did they? They died what? Spiritually. It says our spirit died. So what was their spirit? The Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Of your what? So your mind is your spirit. So when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, and we know their spirit died, but their physical body didn't die, what died? Their mind. Scientists tell us that we only use 9 to 10% of our what? Brain. We can make airplanes with 10%. What can we do with 100? Oh, y'all not hearing me. I'm going somewhere. And think of it. He left 10%. That's a tithe. That's why you should pay your tithes. Brain resurrection. Say with me, brain resurrection. brain resurrection. Now, a lot of this, some of this you all have already heard. I haven't got to the stuff you have not heard. I'm just trying to lay a foundation because I sense there are some people here to bring you up to speed. Amen? And I'm, I'm getting to it. So the father said, the first thing you got to have to work with me is a brain resurrection. Are y'all hearing me? I have to raise your mind from the dead. Uh oh. Your mind got to be raised from the dead in order to even understand God. He says, His ways are higher than your ways. As far as the heavens is from the earth, so are His ways from your ways. And His thoughts from your what? That's why people who think they have a patent on God and their thoughts and their brain hadn't been resurrected, they're far away from Him and don't know it. Like, for instance, I was so religious, I would never think God had a favorite color. That's just for people. But the Bible says he made us in his image and in his likeness. That means stuff he likes or kind of ways he is like, that's how we are too. We are not this way because we started it. It's God who was like we were before we became who we were. So if you have a favorite color, God do too. It's just simple. But religion makes God difficult it don't even make him real do you understand what I'm saying so everything I just share with you precious wonderful people about how the Lord appeared to me because you are special I wouldn't share that with any I don't give my pearls to swine and dogs I know there are some people out here that will hear that and say oh yeah right God's favorite color is green that's how deceived they are because their mind his thoughts are not their thoughts as far as the heavens is from the earth, so are his ways from what? Our ways and his thoughts from what? Our thoughts. Since we fell, 
even though we're made in his image and likeness, our thoughts are out of alignment with how we were created. But there are still some things that we have that are like God. Like, for instance, God have a nose. God have a mouth. Do you think we have a mouth because we just came up with one? No, he made us in his image. He gave us things that were like him. And he also gave us, he gave us a basic autonomy or anatomy or a build in our body that's like him that can never change. And then he also gave us likenesses that are like him. For instance, you would like certain things like you have favorite colors. So he ha- that's him. Are you hearing me here? But when the Lord resurrected my brain, my brain never thought like this. I couldn't even go there because I was limited. When you're dead, you're limited. I want you to lift your hands and say, Lord, take the limitations off my brains. Resurrected from the dead. Some of you, before you leave here this week, God is going to give you a brain resurrection and your mind is going to be able to comprehend supernatural things, even the thoughts of God that are so high. You, When other people don't get it, you will get it. Someone say, no limitations. Come on, say it again. With God the Father, nothing is impossible there are no limits and they limited the holy one of israel when you limit him you can't see the all things possible so i got a brain resurrection and i was able and began to do things i had never done before in the power of god and he says these words he talks about now to him that is able to do the exceeding abundant above all you ask or you see the only realm we've been in and doing things for God is asking with prayer with our tongue but there's a realm where you don't say nothing that's too slow you think Moses did not pray to split the Red Sea he just did it by thought y'all not talking to me Do you ever see that he went through seven steps to how to turn his staff into a snake? How fast did it happen at the burning bush by thought? In this last hour, our prayers must be by thought and not by tongue. Y'all not talking to me. Now to him. Now to the Father that is able to do the exceeding with you, the abundant above all you ask or God said, if you think it, I'll do it. But if your mind is dead, how can you use your mind? So the first thing he told me, he says, when you met my son, he gave you salvation and he gave you exousia. That's power. Exousia power. He says, when you met my spirit, he gave you a a heavenly language that, watch this, that identified that you met him. See, there got to be an identification that you've met these three Godheads personally. When you meet Jesus, the identification, salvation, forgiveness of sin, a changed life. When you meet the Holy Spirit, what is the sign that you've really met the Holy Spirit? Speaking in tongues. I remember when the Pentecostals used to argue with the Baptists over that. No, I got the Holy Spirit because I gave my life to Jesus. And they said, no, that's not true. And and they will argue. And he says, no, you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to speak in tongues. I don't know what's wrong with some of these people who think they got the Holy Ghost and they don't speak in tongues. Come on, y'all not talking to me. That got to be evidence that you've met them. Moses was a sheep herder. After he met God at the burning bush, he could turn a staff into a snake. Now, if Moses was here, they'd call him a witchcraft worker. Oh, y'all not hearing me. But we know that real witchcraft workers could do what he did, too. Just because you've seen witchcraft people do it don't mean we shouldn't do it. We just have a different master we do it through. And the power God give us is stronger. Someone say stronger. 
The sin in this realm I'm about to teach you is the sin of limitation. When you limit God. And the only way out of that kind of thought process of limiting God is to get out of a dead brain. Your 10% capacity that you have is not enough to work with Jehovah. He must resurrect your mind so you can work with him. So the sign for Jesus, when you meet him, salvation. The sign of the Holy Spirit, he gives you heavenly tongues, the unknown tongue. When you meet God, he gives you back what Adam had in the beginning. A resurrected brain. Let me ask you something. Do you think God would make us as human beings with a 10% capacity of a brain? Why would he give us 10%? God is perfect. Everything he do is what? Perfect. He did not give Adam 10%. He gave him 100. But what happened is when we fail, we never study what we had before the fall. Now that Jesus has come, he's restored it. He's made a way for you to get a brain resurrection. But if nobody teach you you need one, how will you get it? How will you know that you need that? If our greatest scientists only use 10 and they can do the greatest thing, what can you do? If they can make contraptions that cause us to travel in a jet, supersonic speed. If we had a hundred, they would know how to disappear and not need any metal to do anything. Oh, I'm going to get into this in a moment. <laughs> you see, Jesus teleported. He took 12 fishermen to the other side of the boat by transport, supernaturally. He walked through walls. He walked on top of water. He turned water into wine. You got to understand that those powers are for today. Those are the powers of limitlessness. And you can't get into that kind of power if you don't know Jehovah. You got to meet him. So the point is, oh my God, y'all pulling so much out of me. I'm trying to get to the real message. The reason why I shared with you about the 18 to 20 year process, the Lord said, you know, there is an age in the spirit, right, David? Not only in the natural, just like you have an age in the natural, that's an age in the spirit. You are a certain amount of years spiritually. I said, Lord, what do you mean? The Bible says in Hebrews, they that are mature or they that are full age have exercised their senses to discern both good and what? Evil. The Bible talks about being full age in the spirit. Full age means maturity. So say this with me. I, I have an age in the spirit. You got to know what that is. You understand? I'm going to show you how he grades, how he ages you. The moment you get saved, this is what Jehovah told me. He said, the moment you got saved, you grow 50 years per year. 50 years per year in the spirit. Once a year. When you're working with Jesus in my spirit. He says, so by the time that your 20 year process is up, you are a thousand years old. This was the exact age I created Adam was on the first day he met me. You notice God did not make Adam a baby and let him grow up. He made him a full grown what? Yeah, that's right. Because babies cannot work with Jehovah. He needs mature people. Oh, y'all not talking to me. That's why he won't get involved with your ministry until a time of maturity. It's called the time of the father. So you're delivered over to tutors and governors, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, fivefold ministry until you can grow up and meet with Jehovah. So what happens is, watch this, when Adam first woke up the first day, he was a thousand years old, spiritually. He was one day old in the natural, a thousand in the spirit. You say, what are you talking about? 50 plus 50 times 20 years is a thousand. The number thousand in the Hebrew, watch this, is the sign of maturity. It's the perfect. Be ye perfect even as your father in heaven is what? Perfect. So in other words, Jehovah will reveal revelation to babes. We know that in the New Testament he did that, but he don't allow you to work with him 
until you're old enough. A full age. Full age to God is 1,000 years old. I told people when I get to heaven, I'm going to know Adam and Eve by their belly button. I'm going to say, lift up your shirt. If they got a belly button, I know it's not Adam and Eve. I think y'all just got their revelation, didn't you? It's sinking in. I've heard people tell me, they says, this teaching you have, nobody could have taught you but God, because nobody thinks like this. Adam did not have a belly button. So he says, I'm going to show you how you age in the spirit. When you finish your 20-year process, you should be a thousand years old. Now watch this. When you meet Jehovah, now you don't age 50 years per year in the spirit. You age a thousand years per day. Y'all, y'all not hearing this. You say, where do you get that from? Well, we, there's another title to the father. He's called the ancient of what? Days. Ancient days. That ain't just because that's his name and he's, he's an old person. No, no, it's because that's a function. You age around Jehovah, ancient of days, when you're around him. You say, where do you get that from? It says one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as what? One day to the Lord. So one day to the Lord is what? A thousand years. When he made Adam the first day a grown man, how old do you think he was in Jehovah's presence? A thousand. That's what he told me. He says, when you meet me, you will age a thousand years per day instead of 50 years per year. He says, now, Jesus then looked at me. He says, this is how much greater my father is than I. You age 50 years per year with me. But when you're with him, you age 1000 years per day. So if Jesus says my father is greater than I, what measurement system do we have to know that? Because everyone under the Godheads, there's no measurement system. They are way beyond. But for you to understand the rank in the Godhead and the greatness of who we're dealing with in the last hour, not only the precious Savior Jesus, not only the wonderful Holy Spirit, but now the awesome glory of the Father. This is why these men... When they would come out of God's presence, they could do extraordinary things. That explains speed. Why? You see, training is like you having to go through time. But when they met Jehovah, they could just do it. Because they are downloaded with ancient of days in a moment. It's like you already been trained. You're just doing it. Even without words. Now I want you to lift your hands and say, God, open my heart. <clears throat> say it one more time. Before I can teach you this, you got to understand what I'm saying. So turn back with me to Romans 12. And now here's the, here's the glorious revelation. Are you ready? 12. Verse 3. So here it is. Someone on my staff had a dream. And in this dream, I was telling them, I'm going to teach you how to walk in the glory powers of God. Because I've been able to walk in the glory powers of God. I've, I've been translated. I've disappeared in front of people. That's why they want to call me a warlock. My face began to be transfigured on three occasions in front of people. I'm not talking about by myself. You know how people come up with a spiritual thing? Yeah, my face was shining, transfigured. Who saw you? What, what, who was around you? Well, well, nobody was there. You know what? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to believe that. it. Because, you know, you have people, they always making up stuff. Super spiritual. They exaggerate. I'm not talking about exaggerating. God has used me to the point where I have walked in the air and didn't fall on the ground. I've been able to move things, matter. Like Jesus said, if you have the grain, faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mouth, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. If you won't doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. That's a mover. Are y'all hearing me here? 
moving dirt. Moses opened the dirt to swallow up his enemies. He changed the physical molecular structure of water to turn it into blood. Who can do those things today? God has taught me this ram. And this is what he told me for 10 years. Don't say nothing. I'll tell you when. And now Jesus appeared to me and said, now tell them. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Before I go down this road, are you ready to shake the world? Are you ready to be ostracized and people to call you warlocks and witchcraft workers? And when they do, you tell them, say, witchcraft ain't got nothing on this. (laughs) One of the greatest things that I've begun to master, and the Lord said, for 20 years I had you master love. Because you can't walk into this realm without mastering love. Love is the greatest of the three, hope, faith, and charity. It's the greatest. But in this realm, the law of faith is required. But not any kind of faith, a faith that works by love. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. That's why the Bible says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but faith which worketh by what? Love. Faith which worketh by what? What I'm about to teach you is way beyond just getting somebody off a crutch or cane, which they're going to get healed today through you. But what I'm about to teach you is way beyond that. You're going to do that plus more stuff. Are you ready? Now you are the first group here this morning. There are thousands coming this week. Give God a shout of praise that you're the first fruit. So here we go. Y'all ready? I can't hear you. And I want you that are in here sick or you're on a crutch, a cane, or in a wheelchair, get ready. Because these people are about to get you set free and healed. But listen to this. Someone on my staff dreamed. And in this dream, they were saying, they, they said, you was telling us, the staff, that you're about to teach us how to walk on top of water like Jesus did. Matter. Now, I have never walked on top of water. Never. Not physically. I've done those other things I told you about, but I've never done that. Physically. I'm being honest with you. The things I told you about that I've done, those things have happened, and they've happened in front of people. We have witnesses. But I'm not a warlock. listen to me and they said you begin to teach us about walking on water and I knew that I had never done that physically and the Lord I knew what God was saying to this person in a dream because when I was 19 years old when I was graduating from school to be a chef The Lord told me in 19, I want you to leave your father and mother's house. And my mom and dad is here today. Give them a great big God bless you. I love them. But he said, this is after I graduated, spent all their money. And they tell me, they say, you know what? Why didn't God speak to you before we spent all our money? So I honestly... Uh, was told in a dream by God says leave your career leave your everything leave your mom and dad's house I was 19 years old and he said and I want you to walk by faith and do full time ministry step out on nothing now I didn't know where I was going to get money food you got to understand and he sent me to another city It's one thing when you're living in a city, you have access to your parents or your brothers and sisters and you ain't got no money, you can ask them. It's another thing when he sends you into a far country like he told Abraham. 
go get out of your father's house into a place I'll show you. I had to go back to Charleston, South Carolina for this training God was giving me when I stepped off on everything. And this is the thing. In the dream, he said, he showed me me walking on top of water. And I didn't understand that back then. I saw myself walk on top of physical water and walk back. He says, I want you to walk. And I just thought, oh, he's just using that as an illustration of, of, of faith. But later on, he taught me what that meant. And he said this to me. He says, the same kind of faith it takes to walk on water physically like it takes Jesus. It's the same kind of faith it takes to walk off a job and trust God full time. You got to hear this. So even though I didn't walk on water with that faith. I was pleasing God with that faith in the way, watch this, in my generation and my circumstances in which it was needed. Because it says without faith it's impossible to what? Please God. But people want to walk on physical water, but they don't want to please God with that same faith in another way. So that's why you got to be caught up in loving God because you will use your faith wrong for yourself. And so the Lord said to me, he says, if I needed you to walk on water physically, you could have done it. And I started teaching my staff. I said, do you not know that the faith, because a lot of them, Jesus appeared to them and told them to come to this ministry, learn under this school full time. And they're being used in amazing miracles. But they had to walk away from everything, they, th their jobs, their careers, all that. Just like he told me when I was a young person. And I was telling him, I said, do you not know the same faith it takes to walk on water, you just did that. So watch this. That means you can walk on top of water physically just like Jesus did. And Peter. Oh, y'all not hear me. You see, the problem is we limit God because we think, oh, to walk on water, that's great. But that ain't what it takes to walk on water. He says if you have the... Faith is a grain of a what? Mustard seed. When Peter said, you are on the water, can I come to you? Jesus says, come. He starts walking on top of water. Then when he drowns, what did Jesus say? Oh, thou of little faith. So all of that walking on top of water, Peter did, it wasn't because he was a pro or he had great faith. It was just little faith. So you say, what are you talking about? For God to use you in the glory powers of this NH, and watch this, some of us will walk on water when it's time. Did Jesus walk on top of water every day? No, he didn't. He only did it with circumstantial circumstances that required a demand for it. Did God split water through Moses every day? No, it's when they came to a demand for it. Are y'all hearing me here? Even Moses didn't know he could do it. Because he was crying to God, get us out of this. And then God said, stretch out your rod. He was learning as he was going. Come on, we got to be honest. The point that I'm trying to make is that we idolize these men as if they weren't human. They were human just like us and didn't know what to do at a certain time. The Bible says this, Elijah, the one who called fire from heaven, was a man of like passions, just as we are. So what happens is unbelief sets in our mind because we idolize them and say, oh, they did this. We can't do that. That's not true. As a matter of fact, we can do greater things than them. But see, your mind got that limitation stuff on it because you keep looking at it wrong. You keep looking at it from this angle instead of this angle. All God is looking for is the measure of faith it takes for you to do the thing, not for you to think you can or cannot do the thing. The powers of limitlessness. These powers have not left the earth. Not seen on earth for thousands of years. The ancient biblical power of God is now back in the 21st century and God wants you to walk in it. He's about to use you in a way like you have never seen. Like how Moses split the Red Sea. Elijah called down fire from heaven. 
Jesus ascending into heaven, turned water into wine, and so much more. These things and truths have been lost, but God is restoring them in our generation again. Believers spend tens of thousands of dollars to enroll in Bible colleges and special ministry training programs just to learn how to walk in the supernatural power of God. But with this exclusive TV offer, David E. Taylor will train you not just how to walk in miracles, but the ancient power of marvels. You can get this session of Training for God's Miracles and Marvels DVD, usually priced at $25, for only $8. That's right, only $8. When you order now, you will also get David E. Taylor's best-selling book, Face-to-Face -face Appearances from Jesus, usually priced at $20, absolutely free. Yes, free. Also included will be your very own free anointed prayer cloth that Apostle Taylor has prayed over personally for miracles to be released in your life. You get God's Miracles and Marvels DVD training and the face-to-face -face appearances from Jesus book by David E. Taylor and your very own free anointed prayer cloth for an unbeatable low price of $8. To order, call 877-843-4567. That's 1877 The Glory. Don't delay. Call in.